Hey YouTube, welcome to a tier list video of S Plus and SS Pokemon in Pocket Incoming. So this is slightly different to what we normally do. Normally I have blue stacks on, there's some music on and it's all great. This is just going to be a real quick look into what Pokemon are in the S tier, what Pokemon are not, and I'm going to try and briefly explain why I've made such decisions. Cool, so without further ado, let's start with Ash's Greninja. So Ash's Greninja is going to be our first S tier. He is the primary attacker in the water comp. Insane damage. And I mean, if, 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 well, I'll do, I'll be doing a showcase on him at some point, but his damage output on bosses is unreal. This, this character is pretty much broken and is very well deserving of that S tier ranking. Next, we have Celebi. Celebi, well, Celebi can be put into S or A. I'm going to throw him in A. And the reasoning is, is, it's a support unit that does phenomenally well. It's the whole the whole mechanic behind it is he doesn't allow your team to die. If you get him to eight star, he becomes phenomenal because all of a sudden you have multiple members of your team not dying and being able to retract time. At four star, it's more of an A, maybe even a B. In fact, at four star, you're probably looking close to B slash A. I've been using him as a forecast. I, it keeps Marsh Shadow alive. I think it's definitely worthy of A, but when you get into S, that's when you get to eight star or higher, can be pushing into a very low S. Really, S rank is gonna be sort of kept to Pokemon that really are meta-defining, and unfortunately Celebi isn't that. Darkrai is going straight into D. You'd hardly ever see him in any team comp, and there is a reason for it. He's not that good. Um Dialga. Dialga is probably between B and A. Um, I'm going to go B, decent controller, decent damage dealer, can do a lot, but I'm going to sit there and call it B. I don't think it's meta defining and I don't think it's like a primary in any of the major comps. So it sort of sits there where it's quite decent universally, but that's about it. Uh, Diancy is going rock bottom, absolutely horrible unit. But again, when Mega Diancy comes out, so when the SS version of this comes out, that's going to go very much into S. But for now, S plus, garbage. Our next S, I am going to throw Gensect. It's going to be the lower end of S, but it's the primary carry for the Steel Team. And Steel Team right now is really meta, so Gensect is naturally going to make its way into the S rank. Phenomenal mechanics, and honestly, like if you're Steel, you're building your team around him. Giratina. Giratina is another one that could very easily be S, can be very easily A. We're going to keep him A because he is the primary tank for Ghost Team. Is also the primary tank for most people that just want to do damage. Phenomenal in Global Indigo. Phenomenal in sort of one, any 1v1 setting. Really tanky and has a fantastic moveset. If you can get him to 11 star, super tanky. I'm going to go A. I'm not going to go any higher than that because there are better tanks out there and I am going to hopefully touch upon them soon. Groudon. Groudon's probably C. It's not as bad as Darkrai and it's not as bad as Diancy, but I'm going to go with C. It's pretty much unusable. And then Ho-Ho is probably in the B rank. I've seen tier lists where Ho-Ho is super low down. I think Ho-Ho, like Celebi, provides this cool mechanic that sort of keeps people alive. Ho-Ho's is just a lot less... Um, you can't rely on as much. You could make an you could make an excuse to put him in C. We're going to keep him in B though. Hooper, Hooper's going to go into S, and I know what people are going to think. They're going to say you're crazy. Hooper eleven star, at eleven star, Hooper is an S rank. It's one of the best damage dealers in the game, but it does require that eleven star. Anything below eleven, A. Still a fantastic damage dealer, but. I am sort of looking at a late game perspective. You're probably going to 11 star whoever you're using and at 11 Hooper is an S. Jirachi, again another A, fantastic controller and a support unit. Just does so much for the team, has to go into A. Um, I know there are some patches coming out and there's some nerfs predicted. If the nerfs do happen, we're going to have to remake this tier list anyway. So Jirachi and Celebi might drop a little, but in reality, Jirachi is one of those ones that can even hit S. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him really high in the A tier. Kyogre's trash. We're just gonna stick Kyogre like there. Chiron. 
I'm gonna go there again. I don't I don't think it offers anything. And I think it doesn't help that it doesn't have a comp that it works really well in. You might say fire, but yeah, no. That's Reshram even. So no, Kyrim doesn't actually have anything. Lugia is another one that's just really bad. And then we actually hit our first support that's going to be in the S rank, and that is Magierna. If you're playing Steel Team, Magierna is your person. Magierna's insanely good right now and provides so much support for that Steel Team. It's just a must have. So, Magierna. Second one, we're looking at Manaphy, straight into the S rank. The water team just isn't the water team without Manaphy. So, straight in the S rank with Manaphy. Marsh Daddy, we're going to put him right at the top because of my personal connection to him. But Marsh Shadow is definitely an S rank. Phenomenal ghost attacker. By the end of the month, when the rest of the ghost team comes out, Marsh Shadow should be popping off. Groudon, again, S rank. Fantastic. Exactly what we said with Giratina, but better. So... You know, great tank, great 1v1. Same with Kyogre. We're going to go into the S rank. These are all Pokemon that you just need to have. In fact, I could drop Hooper down a fair bit. Maybe even that down a fair bit and put him up a bit. But yeah, like this is this is honestly it. Rayquaza for an SS. You're probably looking at B. And I know this is going to sound harsh because anyone that made an SS and isn't sort of performing... Great attacker. One of the best attackers in the game. Could rival Marsh Shadow for damage. Can rival, you know, others for damage. But do you really want a Pokemon that can rival an S Plus for damage when you've invested so much? I would personally not invest in that. There isn't a team Rayquaza works in at the moment. And that for that reason alone, it's going to be sitting in B. Another A rank tank, Melmetal. Um, fantastic tank. Again, really important for the Steel team. But, you know, it's just a great tank, great unit to have. Meloetta. Meloetta's in a weird spot. I'm going to go lower end of A. It can be A, it can be B. Really useful, but also... Actually, no, it's going to go straight into B. The more I think about it, no, Meloetta's got to go into B. It's the highest in B for me, for sure. Uh, we could do something like that, maybe. No, we just want Rayquaza any higher. That's fine. Meloetta's got to be the highest in B, but it could easily be transitioning. And I think as team comps start to come together, as maybe Psychic starts to take over, maybe we'll see some more Meloetta. Mewtwo's going to go into C. Again, when Mega Mewtwo eventually comes out, that's going to go straight to S, so I'm not too worried about that. And Dialga, I'm probably going to put there. That's going to go right there. That's going to go right there. Reshiram's an odd one. I'm going to go B for Reshiram because, again, Fire Team will use him. Oh, Shaman's an odd. Oh, Shaman is tough. I know Simply Josh is going to kill me, but A rank. And, again, the primary reason is doesn't particularly fit a team comp. A team comp isn't really built around Shaman. Fantastic unit. Probably should be in the S tier. Great damage dealer. But there isn't a team for it. And right now, if you've noticed, a lot of people in the S tier are either in the Ghost team, in the Water team, or in the Steel team, and are really sort of pushing their own weight, with maybe the exception being Groudon, who... Oh no, Groudon works in the Fire team, which is the other, which is the fourth team that really is doing alright this patch. Solgaleo is going to be right up there. Fantastic tank, phenomenal 1v1. And then Victini, great controller... And I'm just going to throw him into the S rank. Victini is phenomenal. I was surprised by this one. But Volcanion is actually unreal. Um, great damage output. I wasn't expecting the damage to be that high. And if you're going to put these two together. Magiana and Volcanion together to create Fortress. That in itself probably deserves the top spot. Fortress is great. It's not going to take Marsh Shadow. Because you know, we love Marsh Shadow on this channel. But... You know, it's up there. It, 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 it's a fantastic duo. <sighs> Xerneas. I, I, I've seen some leaks for Xerneas' nerf and I'm not looking forward to it. But Xerneas is definitely an A. Just fits in every single team comp. But that's the problem. It fits in every team comp, but it really doesn't have its own at the moment. 
and Yavital again, one of the highest damage dealers. We could make the same excuse that we did for Rayquaza and with Hooper, but it just doesn't have a home. Maybe, maybe in a dark team in the future, you know, using some of the other more universal picks, but it doesn't have a home at the moment. Zekrom again, I'm prob Zekrom's tough because I could probably put him at the bottom of B tier, but again, doesn't really have a home. <laughs> this is going to feel so mean. I want to put um, Zerora up in A. And I haven't put Zerora in A. There is a very valid reason. He still works very well with Electric and Fighting Types and Marshadow is Fighting. So if you've got a good Fighting Type, Zerora is your one. To just put him in there, provide support, and on top of that is one of the best damage dealers in the game. You 11 star Zerora and he's hitting just as hard as that Marshadow. Fantastic attacker. And I've got him 11 star, he sits in my team, I love him to bits, but, and again, you could call this bias, I just think he's that good, like, you cannot not have him, he's just that good. And lastly, we have Zygarde, which, again, annoyingly, it's got, it suffers the same issue Zerora does, and Zy Zerni uh, Zygarde does, and Xerneas does, but it doesn't have a team, but they all fit very well universally. So we could probably get away with it. And I think that is going to be my team comp. That is going to be my tier list even. Do let me know if you like that. And do let me know what you guys think. And peace out.